Welcome to my channel, Hotspot with Loveth, the ultimate spot for all things entertainment, ranging from celebrity gists, reviews, interesting stories, and African folktales. Subscribe now. Amelia Hart had always been a bit of a wanderer, drifting through life with a curiosity that often led her to places she had no formal invitation to. Weddings, in particular, had become her playground, a stage where she could observe the intricate dance of love and commitment without being tethered to it. There was something intoxicating about the joy and chaos of a wedding, and Amelia relished the anonymity she maintained while blending into the crowd. On this particular night, Amelia found herself at a lavish wedding in Lagos, where the decorations were extravagant, and the guest list glittered with society's elite. Slipping in unnoticed was a skill she had perfected over time, and soon she was sipping champagne and nibbling on hors d'oeuvres as if she belonged. As she moved through the room, her eyes caught sight of a man who stood out from the rest, but not in the usual way. While everyone around him seemed to be caught up in the celebration, he wore a look of quiet detachment. Dressed impeccably as part of the wedding party, he exuded a presence that was both magnetic and mysterious. Yet, there was a hint of cynicism in his eyes, a weariness that mirrored her own feelings about the evening. Intrigued, Amelia couldn't resist the pull of curiosity. Who was this man who seemed just as disconnected from the festivities as she was? She decided to find out, her heart beating a little faster at the prospect of a new adventure. Ethan Bennett had lost count of how many times he'd stood at the altar, watching yet another friend or family member pledge eternal love, while he stood by as the ever-faithful groomsman. The role had become almost second nature to him, a routine he could perform in his sleep. But with each passing wedding, the joy of the occasion seemed to lose its shine. The more he saw of these elaborate ceremonies, the more skeptical he became of the fairy tale ending they promised. He was tired of the questions about when it would be his turn, the knowing smiles, and the subtle nudges from well-meaning relatives. Tonight was no different. As the best man once again, Ethan had fulfilled his duties with precision, delivering a witty speech, making sure the groom was composed, and ensuring everything went off without a hitch. But beneath the surface, there was a growing sense of disillusionment. Love, in his eyes, had become more of a performance than a genuine connection. As the reception buzzed with energy, Ethan found himself drifting to the edges of the crowd, his mind wandering as the evening unfolded around him. That's when he noticed her, a woman who seemed entirely out of place among the throngs of guests. She wasn't part of the bridal party, nor did she seem to be a guest anyone recognized. She moved through the room with an air of detachment, her eyes observing the proceedings with a mix of amusement and curiosity. Intrigued, Ethan watched as she effortlessly slipped past the usual social niceties, her carefree demeanor standing in stark contrast to the formality of the event. There was something refreshingly unpretentious about her, a kind of freedom he longed for but didn't quite know how to grasp. Deciding he had nothing to lose, Ethan approached her, his curiosity piqued. You don't seem to be enjoying the party, he remarked casually as he reached her side. But then again, neither am I. Amelia turned to face him, her eyes sparkling with mischief as she took in his perfectly tailored suit and the slightly jaded expression on his face. I guess we're both here out of obligation rather than choice, she replied, a hint of laughter in her voice. Ethan raised an eyebrow, intrigued by her candidness. Obligation, huh, and here I thought you might be the life of the party. She smiled, a secretive smile that only deepened his curiosity. I'm more of an observer, really. Watching people get swept up in the romance of it all is fascinating, especially when you're not part of it. Ethan chuckled, feeling an unexpected sense of connection with this mysterious woman. I know exactly what you mean. I've been the best man more times than I can count, but I've never quite bought into the whole, happily ever after, thing. Well, you're in good company, Amelia said, her eyes meeting his in a shared understanding. Maybe we can help each other survive another wedding. As they continued talking, Ethan felt a sense of relief wash over him, here, Finally, was someone who understood his skepticism, someone who didn't buy into the illusions that so many others did. Little did he know, this encounter was about to change the way he saw both love and life. As the conversation between Amelia and Ethan unfolded, it quickly became clear that they were kindred spirits in their cynicism. Their banter flowed effortlessly, laced with a sharp sarcasm that had them both laughing more genuinely than they had in a long time. 
Amelia found Ethan's skepticism about love oddly refreshing. Most men she encountered were either hopelessly romantic or just trying to impress her, but Ethan was different, he wore his disillusionment like a badge of honor, and it intrigued her. Ethan, on the other hand, was captivated by Amelia's unapologetic attitude towards life. Her disdain for the conventional expectations of love was a breath of fresh air. She was unconventional in every way, crashing weddings for the thrill of it, with no attachments, no strings, and no regrets. It was something he had never encountered before, and he found himself drawn to her spontaneity. As they traded stories, they discovered that their wariness of commitment came from similar places. Ethan spoke of the countless weddings he'd been a part of, each one adding another layer of doubt about the institution of marriage. Amelia shared tales of fleeting romances and the disappointment of realizing that love often came with more strings attached than she was willing to handle. The night wore on, and the revelry of the wedding continued around them, but for Ethan and Amelia, time seemed to stand still. Their conversation grew deeper, their sarcasm giving way to genuine reflections on their pasts and the reasons they had both chosen to remain on the sidelines of love. When it was finally time to part ways, there was a moment of hesitation. Neither wanted to leave, but they were also wary of breaking the unspoken rule they both lived by, don't get too close. With a shared smile and a promise to maybe crash another wedding together someday, they said the goodbyes. As Amelia walked away, she couldn't help but wonder if she'd ever see him again. And Ethan, as he watched her disappear into the night, felt a twinge of something he hadn't felt in a long time, curiosity mixed with a touch of hope. Little did they know, fate had more in store for them than just a chance encounter. Fate intervenes when Amelia and Ethan cross paths again at another wedding a few weeks later. This time, Ethan recognizes Amelia immediately and isn't surprised to see her crashing yet another wedding. Amelia is equally amused to see Ethan once more playing the role of the disinterested groomsman. They fall back into easy conversation, finding comfort in each other's company as they navigate another event filled with romance that neither fully believes in. Realizing that they both find weddings more bearable with each other's company, Amelia and Ethan make a pact, they'll be each other's plus one at future weddings, whether invited or not. This agreement allows them to enjoy the events without the pressure of expectations from family or friends. Over the next few weeks, they attend multiple weddings together, building a strong, platonic friendship based on the shared skepticism about love and marriage. As Amelia and Ethan continued to meet up, their relationship began to shift from one of mutual amusement to something more complicated. Initially, they kept things light, attending weddings together as partners in crime. They would mock the cheesy love songs, roll their eyes at over-the-top vows, and make snide comments about the inevitable wedding toasts. But as they spent more time together, they started to notice things about each other that neither had expected. Amelia, who had always prided herself on her ability to remain emotionally detached, found herself drawn to certain moments at the weddings they attended. She had always dismissed them as mere rituals, but she couldn't help but notice the warmth in Ethan's eyes during the father-daughter dances. She would catch herself watching the way he subtly smiled at the tender interactions, and it stirred something in her, a feeling she couldn't quite name. For someone who claimed to be uninterested in love, Ethan seemed to harbor a quiet admiration for these moments of genuine connection. Ethan, on the other hand, began to see through Amelia's carefree facade. He had once admired her for her ability to breeze through life without attachments, but now he noticed the way she grew quiet during the vows, her eyes reflecting a deep, unspoken longing. It wasn't just boredom, as he had first assumed, but a sign that Amelia might not be as indifferent to love as she pretended to be. He could see that beneath her rebellious exterior was someone who had been hurt before, someone who perhaps longed for the very thing she claimed to disdain. Their pact to remain detached started to waver. The more they got to know each other, the harder it became to maintain the distance they had both insisted on. They began to see the cracks in each other's armor, cracks that revealed vulnerability, hope, and a shared fear of getting too close. Amelia started to question her belief that love was nothing more than a temporary distraction, while Ethan found himself wondering if his skepticism was a shield against the disappointment he feared. One evening, after another wedding where they had spent more time observing each other than the ceremony, they sat in a quiet corner of a dimly lit bar. The usual sarcasm and witty banter were absent, replaced by a contemplative silence. 
They were no longer just partners in wedding crashing, they were two people who had begun to care about each other in a way that frightened them both. Amelia broke the silence first, her voice softer than usual. Do you ever think we're wrong? She asked, her gaze fixed on the glass in her hand. About love, I mean. Maybe. Maybe it's not as hopeless as we think. Ethan didn't answer right away. He knew that agreeing with her would mean admitting something he wasn't sure he was ready to face. But as he looked at Amelia, seeing the uncertainty in her eyes, he realized that he didn't want to keep his distance anymore. Maybe, he finally said, his voice barely above a whisper. Maybe we're just afraid of what it might cost us. Their eyes met, and in that moment, they both understood that the walls they had built around their hearts were beginning to crumble. The armor they had worn so proudly was no longer enough to protect them from the feelings they had tried so hard to deny. The more weddings they crash together, the more complicated their relationship becomes. Both Amelia and Ethan start developing feelings for each other, but neither is willing to admit it, fearing it would ruin the easy dynamic they've built. They each struggle with their emotions, unsure how to reconcile the growing affection with their shared disdain for traditional romance. At another wedding, this one more intimate and low-key, Amelia and Ethan were mingling with guests, sipping champagne and making the usual observations. They were laughing at the extravagant floral arrangements when an older woman, one of the bride's aunts, approached them with a warm smile. You two make such a lovely couple, she said, patting Ethan's arm. I can see the way you look at each other, so much love. When is your big day? The words hit them both like a ton of bricks. Amelia's laughter died in her throat, and Ethan's smile faded. For a moment, they were both stunned into silence. The woman, unaware of the tension she had just ignited, continued chatting about the joys of marriage before moving on to mingle with other guests. Amelia and Ethan exchanged an uneasy glance, the air between them suddenly thick with unspoken words. As the evening progressed, the weight of the comment hung over them, making every interaction feel strained. They tried to shake it off, but the questions it raised were impossible to ignore. Were they just two friends who enjoyed each other's company, or had their relationship evolved into something deeper? As the reception wound down and guests began to leave, Amelia and Ethan found themselves standing on the venue's balcony, overlooking the city lights. The silence between them was no longer comfortable but suffocating. Finally, Amelia broke the silence. Why did that bother us so much? She asked, her voice tinged with frustration. We've always been clear about what this is, haven't we? Ethan's jaw tightened as he struggled to find the right words. I don't know, Amelia. Maybe it's not as simple as we thought. Maybe. Maybe we haven't been as clear as we thought. The tension that had been simmering between them for weeks finally boiled over. Amelia, who had always prided herself on her independence and her ability to remain detached, felt cornered by her own emotions. So what are you saying, Ethan? That was something more. That we're... I don't know. Ethan interrupted, his voice rising. I don't know what we are, but I do know that I can't keep pretending that I don't feel something for you. And I think you feel it too, whether you want to admit it or not. His words hung in the air, heavy and undeniable. Amelia looked away, torn between her fear of getting too close and the undeniable connection she felt with Ethan. The argument left them both shaken, neither willing to confront the reality of their relationship but unable to dismiss the possibility that they had crossed a line they could never go back from. The night ended with them parting ways, each lost in their own thoughts, confused and uncertain about what the future held for them. The question that lingered was no longer about weddings or cynicism, it was about whether they were ready to confront the truth about what they meant to each other. Weeks passed since their last argument, and in that time, Amelia and Ethan avoided each other. Their once regular text exchanges dwindled to silence, and the excitement of crashing weddings together felt like a distant memory. Each nursed their hurt feelings, unsure how to bridge the widening gap between them. Then came an invitation to the wedding of a mutual friend, one they couldn't easily refuse. Both decided to attend, but this time, they went separately, determined to enjoy the event despite the unresolved tension hanging over them. Amelia arrived first, her heart heavy with the thought of possibly seeing Ethan. She wasn't sure if she was ready for the encounter, but something deeper compelled her to face the situation. Ethan arrived shortly after, scanning the crowd for Amelia. When? 
Their eyes finally met across the room, a wave of emotions rushed over both of them, regret, longing, but most of all, an unspoken understanding that they couldn't continue avoiding each other. The ceremony began, and as the couple exchanged vows, Amelia and Ethan couldn't help but reflect on their own journey. It wasn't the institution of marriage that scared them, it was the vulnerability, the risk of opening their hearts fully to someone else. As the ceremony ended and the guests moved to the reception, Ethan decided he couldn't leave things unresolved. He found Amelia standing alone by the garden, staring at the sky. He approached her cautiously, his heart pounding in his chest. Amelia, he began, his voice soft but steady. She turned to face him, her expression guarded yet hopeful. I've been doing a lot of thinking since our last talk. And I realized that it's not love I'm afraid of, it's losing it, getting hurt again. But being without you these past few weeks has been worse than anything I've ever imagined. Amelia felt her heart swell at his words. She had spent those same weeks questioning her own fears, realizing that her detachment was just a way to protect herself from potential pain. But the thought of a life without Ethan, without the joy and connection they shared, was more painful than the risk of vulnerability. I've been scared too, she admitted, her voice trembling. Scared of what this could mean, scared of getting too close. But I don't want to keep running away from something that could be real, something that could be, us. Ethan smiled, a genuine warmth spreading across his face. So what do you say we give this a chance? Not on anyone else's terms, but ours. No labels, no expectations, just us, figuring it out together. Amelia returned his smile, feeling the weight of uncertainty lift off her shoulders. I'd like that, Ethan. I'd really like that. In that moment, the tension between them melted away, replaced by a newfound resolve to face their fears together. As they walked back into the reception hand in hand, they knew that they were starting something new, not bound by the traditional love stories they once mocked, but by a genuine connection that they were finally ready to embrace. With their relationship now out in the open, Amelia and Ethan navigate their new romance with the same humor and honesty that brought them together. They continue to attend weddings, but now as a couple who has rewritten the rules of love for themselves. The journey becomes a story of embracing the unexpected, finding joy in the imperfections of love, and proving that while they may have started as wedding crashes, they've found something real in each other.